Heck, what would skiing be without really bold statements? Jonathan Ballou made one in the last video that I made, Receiving Pressure. I'd like to dive into that bold statement a little bit more. Here it is. Go back to the 80s equipment and 80s technique. And uh, similar- I was pretty young then. So I'm, okay. I'm better with the 90s equipment, 90s technique. All right, yeah. 90s equipment, 90s, <laughs> compared to today. Similarities, differences. Um, if we go back to that thing that we said is just core about skiing, it's about pressure management, it's about force management. It's not different. I'm going to say it again. It's not different. So to make sense of a statement like that, we need a little context. With skis that look so different, the ski on the left from 50 years ago, the ski on the right from today, what in the world could we be talking about when we say force management the same thing? Well, it's because there's four things that remain the same when we're considering skis from 50 years ago and today. That's gravity, physics, camber, and side cut. So what is camber, you may ask? It's that built-in arc to the base of the ski, that arc that exists when the ski is at rest. When we press down on that camber, or when pressure is applied, we flatten the ski or then bend the ski into reverse camber. Bending that ski into reverse camber builds energy, and when bent, that ski wants to rebound back to its original resting state of camber. So that's one variable that hasn't changed from the 70s, 80s to today, camber. The next variable is side cut. So what is that? So side cut is that hourglass shape of the ski where it's wider at the tip and the tail than it is at the waist of the ski where it's narrowest. And believe it or not, that C4 fissure on the left has side cut. So whether we're dealing with the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, we're dealing with pressure management, force management. The interesting distinction becomes where and how is the force applied in the turn. So in the old days, gravity helped us from the middle to the end of the turn to bend that really long ski with very little side cut. And back in the old days, a lot happened at the end of the turn. There could be a lot of bend of the ski, so a bunch of rebound that needed to be managed. Or because the ski was so straight and long, we needed to make a really big step to get out of the turn. And those movement patterns are different today because the skis can be so much more efficient, which also relates to the shape of the turn. Because in the past, we made really more of a fish hook shape of a turn, with the pressure and heavy edging towards the end of the turn, these days we are able to shape a complete arc from the top of the turn through the finish of the turn. And due to the materials of these skis that we're on today and the greater increased side cut, we're able to bend a deeper arc if you're skillful enough. But really one of the most significant differences between the old skis and new skis today is how we're able to establish edge and pressure through our movements at the top of the turn where we're able to use gravity in our favor as opposed to having the gravity and forces build up so significantly against us at the end of the turn. So you're recognizing the theme here, forces and management, whether it's the old skis or new skis. And I made reference to this in an article I wrote 20 years ago for the professional skier. So to set the scene a little bit, back in 2005 when I wrote this article, people were still becoming accustomed to the new equipment. And I was making the point that pressure management was key. We just had to shift how we went about it and what we knew about it. For example, that big extension move that we made at the end of the turn, that pressure control mechanism that we used, we had to do that to get out of the old turn and into the new turn but what was acceptable and necessary technique on the old equipment was not necessary on the new equipment. We needed to learn new movement patterns, new ways to control pressure and the forces underfoot. So here's my point. Camber and side cut are fact. They existed in the 70s and 80s, and they exist today. In other words, to Jonathan's point, if managing pressure and forces are core to skiing, then that makes camber and side cut 
core to skiing. Being skillful at managing side cut and camber, that's what it's always been about. And yes, there are differences, nuanced differences or significant differences as a matter of technique to compensate for what the skis could or could not do for us. Heck, back in the day, you had to be one of the best skiers on the planet to bend that ski into reverse camber. But not today. Intermediate skiers can do it, or 88-year-olds like Max here can carve a complete turn from start to finish. So the ski has always been a tool of pressure and force management, whether it was 50 years ago or today. My absolute favorite memory from Interski was the retro ski race that Josh Fogg and I podiumed at. We came in third yeah. place at Interski, yeah. um, the only podium event we did. Um, so, but we got to the base and they gave us skis from 1978. They were pretty yeah. new, right? Yeah. Uh, but with new bindings on them, or modern bindings, but like 1970s skis. And, okay, what's the first thing he and I both did? Oh, well, you know, stand on the outside ski, tip it over, see what it feels like. Okay, now we know how much rotary to add. Yeah. But, same damn thing. I'm trying to get the outside ski to engage with the snow. I'm trying to get the snow to push on me from the outside, through the outside, so that I turn. And then I use all my other skills, edging, rotary, fore aft mechanics, to align to it. The thing that's different about the shape skis is they're easier. Yeah. There, it's easier to get them to arc. You have more options on the newer ski than you do on the older ski, but the basic mechanics, the basic concept that I'm trying to get the snow to push on my outside ski and align to receive that force and then manipulate it, it's the same. How there's daylight here, okay? Uh, but the tip and tail are biting the snow. When you apply pressure to this, the middle of the ski, that there's, there's contact with the snow throughout, and this bend scribes, shapes an arc. Got that? Okay. So um, the, the tip, the tip, you know, when you apply pressure to that ski tip and put pressure underfoot, that ski tip is going to bend, and the whole idea is to bend as deep or tight an arc as you can. It's one thing to, to roll the ski over on edge with no pressure, right? The, you're, you're not gonna have as much effect. You apply a little more pressure, now we're going to start bending an arc. Apply more pressure, you're going to bend the ski more, and you are going to bend a deeper arc. It's like the difference between a big C and a little C. Got me? And it's easy to make a really, 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 really big ski. It's more dip, uh, big, big C. It's more difficult to carve a little C in, in a small distance, got it? And so then it comes to pressure along the length of your ski, right? If you're always in the back seat, if you're always back here, you're going to be applying pressure onto this tail. You're not going to be applying pressure underfoot, or you're not going to be affecting the tip of the ski. And it's the tip of the ski with the shape of the ski that draws you through that turn. That's, that's one way the ski works. Another, th another characteristic of the ski um, is camber. So camber is when you put the two skis together and you see daylight here, right? Now you saw how that camber worked when the ski was rolled up on edge, right? When you pressure, apply pressure, then you can get a kind of a bounce, a bounce effect. The, the way the ski is, is bent, when you put pressure on that, it can help, it generates energy. Okay, generates energy, and that, that energy can be propelling, okay?